Hello, how are you all doing, guys? It's wonderful to see you all. We hope you are all safe and tuning in from your comfort zones. I am Akanksha Nitnore, core team member of GDG Nagpur. We are all excited to have you have you all with us today. This is the second day of the seven-day Flutter Bootcamp. We have collaborated with various Google Developer Students Club. The that are. Uh, the Cummins College of Engineering Nagpur, Government College of Engineering Nagpur, then the Institute of Technical Education and Research, uh, Sanjeevani College of Engineering Nagpur, Government College of Engineering Nagpur, then the Modern Institute of Engineering and Technology, and the St. Vincent Paloti College of Engineering and Technology Nagpur. Are you all excited to jump in and let's utter in flutter? We have with us Aman Khan Rohani, who is the hybrid app developer at Conway and Karan Khode, who is the Flutter developer at the Red Devtas. They will be guiding us how to make use of basics and layout widgets for both single child and multiple child layouts. So let's welcome both of them. And now without any further delay, I would request them to begin with the insightful session. Hi, good evening, guys. So this is Aman. So welcome to the second day of the seven day bootcamp of Let's Adar in Flutter. So today uh, we'll be starting from and talking about widgets and uh, how are they, like what importance they have in Flutter. So uh, before diving through uh, widgets part, uh, I would like uh, Himanshu to uh, like uh, make a summary conclusion of what happened yesterday so that you guys have a good head start okay so thank you so much aman uh i hope guys you are doing good and uh, yeah uh i think that you remember a few of the concept yesterday uh, like we've learned so yeah today also we are going to use the dartpad for the uh running the flutter application because uh most of you i guess didn't install the flutter in your system because of maybe some of the problems or another so we will be using the dartpad for today's session okay so it will be a lot easier for you to run and compile the code and run it in the browser. So guys, uh, if you remember that yesterday we've learned a few of the things about like widgets, what are the widgets which we are going to use in the application in order to build the UI, okay? So there are a few of the things like the layouts, okay? They play a very important role in the application. So there are things like rows, columns, containers, okay? So few of those things uh, we've learned yesterday. So we'll just cover those topics uh, along with the practical implementation of those widgets. So yeah, let's start here. Uh, so Aman will guide you through the journey. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's start with uh, what the Flutter is composed of. We'll be starting with widgets. So as Himanshu already uh, have like given you some basic assumption of uh, what type of widgets are being used in Flutter. So, so here every country has their national anthem and the Flutter framework has its own national anthem that is everything is a widget. So the core of its mechanism is widgets uh, and in Flutter almost everything is widget. So even layout models, widgets, images, icons, whatever you use are made up of composing widgets. And these widgets actually give us uh, the independence and more. Uh, we are more comfortable to make custom things throughout them. So this is the reason, uh, this is the uh, good advantage we can say which uh, cross-platform technologies give. So here what we are doing is we are not using uh, the native uh, widgets uh, here. So Flutter ha has its own set of widgets and we can make our own custom widgets there. So as uh, Himanshu told you yesterday, uh, basic widgets, rows, columns, and all these things, uh, when you will uh, think uh, they come from, uh, if uh, one has uh, uh, seen HTML, CSS, how it works, how their layout works, rows, columns, it's almost, you can say it's similar to them, but there are some subtle differences. So <clears throat> we'll start with uh, what is the like uh, pattern and architecture of uh, the layouts and uh, what uh, like different types of uh, layout widgets are there in Flutter. 
so we start with a material app widget which is uh, the basic widget for when we want to use material libraries uh, especially for android and uh, another is the cupertino app widget uh, which is being used uh, when we want to use ios based libraries ios based you can say uh, styles or widgets uh, which looks like uh, and which gives a native touch so and another is widgets app so basic root is widgets app which is being developed by flutter and if we want to use material library we use material app otherwise we use cupertino app inside that <clears throat> comes a scaffold now what's a scaffold scaffold is like a you can say uh, a box covering which covers all the uh, small widgets which we are going to use uh, in our application screens so uh, this has again an app bar so what is an app bar uh, app bar is like uh, a small uh, navigation bar which which is being displayed on the top of your application screen you must have noticed it on every app, app. so in some there is in some there is not but most of the application use app bars so it starts with an app bar but there are so many widgets uh, which are available in uh, like widgets library which you can get of course from google but here comes uh, the main thing is how the layout is drawn here how do we make sure that when we are building ui widgets uh, and we need to be responsive right by responsive i mean uh, there are so many devices small and large and uh, devices with some property enabled some property disabled how do we make sure that uh, we give the proper uh, ui experience to the user uh, no matter uh, from which device he or she is accessing so for that we need to make sure uh, our widgets are responsive also i will get to that part later first i will talk about uh, two different type of layout widgets uh, which is first is single child layout widget and second is multi child layout widget so what we can do is these widgets can arrange other widgets columns rows grids and many other layouts there is, there is also third type of widget which is called silver widgets which we will talk about later so what happens in a single child layout widget so i have differentiated them because we can then better understand what happens wait yes so a single child layout widget is a widget uh, which takes only one widget as its child for example we can say we have a normal widget called a container widget so what a container widget does it 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 has a particular structure a box like structure which you can say inside that it can only accommodate one widget that means we cannot put multiple widgets inside it so what happens in a container is i will show what happens in a container is if this is your container this will only take this child parameter that means it cannot have multiple children it can only accommodate one widget whereas a row or a column is a multi child layout widget that means it can have multiple widgets on its own that means it takes a children property so what happens is we can now accommodate more of the widgets here inside now these are the basic widgets which are being used in flutter and these uh, widgets are in itself developed by flutter to uh, uh, make it responsive to make the uh, ui whatever we are doing responsive across devices so what happens here is they have their many properties which are like alignment padding all those things which make uh, a layout responsive 
for example for showing that i have one demo here so here this is a row with three of its widgets so there are multiple widgets here uh, this is one icon this is second and third here you can see this is the alignment so there are two types of alignment uh, which are being used in flutter first is main axis alignment and second is cross axis alignment now how do we know what those actually mean so when i will go to this cross axis alignment and so what cross axis alignment actually mean is that it handles the alignment between it handles the vertical alignment so as you can see the start comes here end come here and center comes here whereas the main axis alignment it covers the horizontal alignment so here if we want these widgets to space evenly we are using space evenly so uh, these widgets will have equal spaces in every other device so it will be responsive by default and when we go to start it will go to the start alignment where is an end so specifically we can choose it there so if there is a column it may have different properties so there is one new property in cross axis alignment which is a stretch so what it does it stretches it through its space this is start this is end and this is center so uh, what i would uh, what in my experience i have seen is uh, in flutter if you are building ui it's more of a game between rows and columns stacks and uh, a more which you can say container so these are the uh, parent uh, widgets which you have to use everywhere right so if you want to use multiple widgets you have to use row and column and all those things so uh, one more bad way to align these multiple widgets together could be using padding and uh, yeah could be using padding so what padding does is it gives a space from one widget to another widget but that space you have to define custom like how much space should be there but that is not responsive right <clears throat> but in some cases there are there are some cases where uh, we don't require row and column right for example there are single child layout widgets where we don't require a row and a column so there what we do if we want to uh, assign the height which should be like uh, responsive okay according to device then we need to know what the size of the device is like uh, size of the device is like uh, the height of width for that we use media query so what media query does is it has a property with it is a property what it does it it takes context now what is context this context come from a build method so whenever uh, if you if you people have tried the basic uh, hello world flutter application when you have build it uh, so people who have installed uh, they would know so uh, there is a build method there which gives us the context so what context is it is the root through which we can know the, uh, know whatever it is there inside right so using that context what we can do is we can get the height as well as width of that device so using that height and width uh, what we can do is we can just directly pass this height and width uh, to the height property of container as well as width property of container or for example any single child scroll you widget which is align container icon button image so what that will do is that will make your uh, make your mobile responsive <clears throat> so uh, these are the like most important things which you should know in uh, when you are building layouts like widgets in flutter you should know first know what are single child and multi child layout widgets and uh, how and when you should use it so sometimes what happens i have seen in other code as well as i have done that mistake there are multiple uh, <clears throat> layers of 
uh, rows and columns being used unnecessarily so sometimes what that uh, does is it makes confusion so due to that confusion uh, we are unable to know like uh, what is actually happening so when we try to change one ui so there is some issue with it so yeah this is what i wanted to uh, tell you this was, this was like most of more of oral about uh, what are the widgets and how we should use them so and one more thing which i would like to add is <clears throat> Uh, you must have wondered that why flutter has come with their own set of libraries when they can use uh, their the widgets from native uh, like from uh, android as well as ios so there's a reason behind that too so uh, what happens is uh, they don't build on top of that those native services so that is what the main difference is between uh, other cross platform technologies and flutter and one more thing is if you have uh, for example if you are running android 8 and uh, you you are unavailable means you won't get the update of android 9 or android 10 and there are some ui changes uh, which is specific in that so what flutter does is that flutter take all the updated ui changes so it uh, so since it does not depend on native ui widgets so you can get those same rich looking ui on your android 10 device also so there are more of like many more <coughs> differences uh, which made uh, flutter stand apart from other cross platform type so now i'll hand over this uh, to uh, himanshu he'll be taking a small hands on about uh, how this will actually work so yeah that was a very nice explanation by you amar uh, related to the widget so guys uh, if you remember yesterday also we've seen the example for the uh, single channel multi channel layout okay so guys um like we've seen the uh, one of the application that is the our hello world application in which we use the text widget okay so in that particular text widget uh, if you remember please can you just uh, put it in the comment section what exactly we've used there like you can reply it with the single child or the uh, multiple child so please do reply in the comment section whatever the problem is there so we can just move towards the next part okay so we will just have a hands on experience on the uh layouts so yeah guys please do comment here if you are not, uh, not facing any issues then uh, we will just move to the next one okay so i would like to just uh, make sure that everything is clear for you guys Okay, so I guess that you are not having any issues related to the installation and anything else. So we can move to the next part. Okay, so guys, uh, first of all, you need to remember few of the concept while using the widgets in the Flutter. Okay, so there is the uh, concept for the scaffold. Then after that, safe area. Okay, so yesterday we showed you one of the error that is the overflowed error. Okay. so it's going to occur many times in your uh, app because of the responsive problem okay so if you don't use the media queries okay in that condition you might be facing those problem or if the widgets are not nested properly so still then you can uh, get the particular error so guys in order to avoid those error it's uh, better to use the media queries so i will just give you the quick intro what exactly the media queries like consider that um, you are having the application which you want to use it on the different type of devices which are having different screen size okay so in that condition guys uh, the total uh, calculation for the height and width okay that's been handled by the media query a uh, few of you might be like a uh, bit familiar with the media queries in the web application development that is using the html and css so it's kind of same concept here also okay so the media query just handles it like uh, consider you are having a mobile phone then a tablet and then laptop or pc so it actually calculates whatever the size you want and it will automatically uh, adjust the widget according to the particular size okay 
so you don't have to worry about that you will have to write the every single line for that to manage this responsiveness over the different aspect of the devices okay so yeah media queries do handle these things then after that guys um there is the concept of the rows and columns okay so most of you might be knowing the uh, what exactly the rows and columns are so basically row is nothing but the horizontal one and content, uh, column is nothing but the vertical one so after this there are the things like the uh, main axis alignment and cron cross axis alignment which have been uh, earlier told by the aman so yeah now we will just uh, move towards the dark pad so we can get started with the layouts aman please can you just move to the uh, dark pad yeah you want me to share dark pad dark pad yeah yeah wait yes manish are you able to see the screen uh not yet it's not being shared yet uh till then aman please can you just open this particular link i've shared with you so i'll just sure. do uh, then few of the more things related to the layout are you able to see my screen now uh no it's not present yet wait a second maybe there might be some issues sometimes it take time to just appear yeah i mean while you can continue yeah so guys um uh, we'll be sharing one of the link in the comment section and description too uh, that is related to the layout okay so it's from the official flutter uh, so here guys you can find more useful utilities for your development so whatever the problem you might be facing okay so you just get the uh, like use it of that particular widget over here like uh, if you are just uh, using the like consider you are using the rows and columns okay so if nothing is working in your uh, system so at that time you can just refer to this website and there you will find a lot of example related to the rows columns containers and everything else okay then along with that guys uh, this particular year section for the layouts too where you will see the uh, different type of things like the main axis alignment cross axis alignment and all those things so once um, we are able to show you those things i'll just give you the hands on for that things so yeah just wait we'll uh, just checking the particular thing so um there has been some issue with screen sharing i guess is it resolved himanshu uh no not yet i guess uh can you see my screen amar there some issue with the uh, now i can see okay so yeah yeah okay 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 it's taking a uh, much time though okay so once again i'll just share the screen that was my screen i think i'm able to share it now okay so yeah once again you can just share your screen so we'll just begin with the explanation for those widgets yeah sure okay okay here we are i'm with better yeah <coughs> yeah uh, as we discussed earlier guys 
builds are nothing but the classes used to build the UIs, and you can consider it as the basic building block for the UI. Okay, so now we are just going to look at the different type of layouts. So, guys, you might be like wondering that exactly what this layout is. Okay, so uh, I will just give you the example with this reference to this particular web page. Okay, now here, guys, you can see that there is the sidebar, then here it is the header. Okay. In application, we basically call it as a app bar. Then after that, here again, it's the uh, outside feature. Okay, so guys, this basically all these things are inside the layout. Okay, so guys, here uh, there are a few different things. Like you might be using the side navigation. Then after that, bottom navigation. Okay, so there are a few things which you need to follow during the uh, building the layout for the application. That wherever you place the widget. Okay. It might uh, happen that you just use it anywhere. So in this case, you might be facing that issue for the overflow pixel. Okay. Otherwise, even the application will not be a proper one. So you need to remember a few things. Then after that, guys, here you can see that here is the uh, bottom navigation being used here. Okay. That is the call, then route, and share. So exactly, guys, here you can clearly see uh, there is the equal spacing between this. Okay. So yeah, this two comes in the layout. So we'll just cover these things too, okay? So remember guys, you don't need to adjust every single component here. Like if you want to space them equally, then there are the options in Flutter for that too, okay? So now guys, here there is three icon along with the text, okay? So you can consider, I'll just give you a short example with reference to this. That is the, consider it is, uh, it is the row, okay? So as we know that, row is uh, having the children, okay? So it can contain more than single widget, right? So guys, here, there are three different widgets, okay? Because Flutter is nothing but widget. Everything is a widget. So yeah, here it's the icon along with the text. Again, icon with the text, icon with the text. So here guys, uh, it's equal spacing, okay? So guys, we'll just scroll a bit down, okay? Okay, so you guys are familiar with this diagram. Okay, you've seen it earlier because uh, I'm gonna explain it quite well that exactly what should be the like uh, hierarchy of your widgets. Okay, so that you get the perfect layout. Okay, so guys, uh, here I'll just give you the like short one. Uh, inside the container, we are having the rows. Okay, and, uh, if you just have the example uh, prior one, okay, so there you can clearly see that consider that whole thing was a container inside that we've taken row and inside the row we were having the column okay that is the three columns then after that guys we were using each icon along with the text okay so guys now there's the thing that inside column we are holding icon and a container and inside container we are holding a text now you might be wondering that why we are doing this okay so we don't want that the text should be in front of icon okay we want it below the icon so because of that guys we are just wrapped that text in the container because we know that container is not in the horizontal one it's in the vertical okay so guys basically here the column holds icon as well as the container which holds the text so basically it's going to make a block in which the icon will be at the top and the text will be below it okay so in the similar way all these three widgets are being wrapped in this particular row okay so they are going to show in a straight line. Now, if you just replace this particular row with column, then guess what? It's going to happen. So yeah, it will just put that uh, complete horizontal view to the vertical view. So we will not do that because we haven't seen any of the bottom navigation, uh, like it's having the vertical layout, okay? It's basically having the horizontal layout. So yeah, if you want to build something like uh, unrealistic then yeah you can definitely use that thing but yeah usually we don't use those things we use the horizontal one so that was the whole structure for the uh, layout for the bottom navigation okay so now guys uh, we'll just move towards the next one and please scroll it okay so now guys the uh, the widget named as center okay so it's also a layout widget okay because the name itself suggests you that it's going to do something related to the 
aligning the content to the center okay so guys whatever content you are going to wrap it inside the center it's going to be aligned in the center of the screen okay so that's what the center widget do so basically guys remember the uh, center widget is going to align it vertically and horizontally both okay so that's why uh, during yesterday's session we've seen one of the widget that is the text widget which was having hello flutter so we used the center widget along with that in order to make it horizontal and vertically center of the screen okay so guys uh, till here <coughs> is everything clear please do reply in the comment section so we can just move forward if anything is not clear you can ask in the comment this means everyone is scoring good at quiz Let's yeah i get it it's really good to see that <laughs> so yeah. yeah let's have a look at the other widget that is the image widget so guys uh, today we are not going to cover the image because uh, definitely it's going to be in another session when we are going to have the look at the apis part okay so now uh, we are not going to cover the image asset but yeah i will just give you the short intro about the image widget too so basically guys whenever you want to use the image in your application okay so if you guys remember that in pubspec.yml file we have defined the path for the uh, what are the asset we are going to use like in our case it's the image okay so we basically define the path over there for the particular image like consider we are having the uh, image named as bmw okay so in that condition guys um, whatever the image is there it's going to be from the assets folder and not from the uh, network so there are two different type of images okay so one is from the asset and another one is from the network so we will have the look uh, for this widget too but not in today's session so just remember that you can use the uh, image from the assets folder as well as the network image that's fetching it from the internet okay so there is then some of the concept like error handling for the network image because sometimes it may happen that the image isn't loading from that url so in that condition your app might crash okay so for these things we will just have it uh, in the another one then after that guys here is the icon widget okay so basically if you remember this icon widget we used it prior in the yesterday's lecture and uh, we were having the uh, fab that is the floating action button where we were having the add icon okay so at that time also we used this particular widget that is the icons widget so yeah it's also inbuilt in flutter so you don't have to use any third party library but yeah if you want to change the particular icon then you can uh, take those libraries from the flutter type okay now guys here is another one uh, let's have the example okay now as you know that uh, children property is there in the row column list view stack so guys you are familiar uh, now you are familiar with the rows and columns okay but exactly what is this list view or what is this stack okay so basically remember guys um, i'll give the example with respect to the application okay consider that you are building a shopping cart okay so in that you are having uh, many items added to the cart in this case you want to show the complete list okay so what are the items are there it's going to be hold in the list view okay so there are different properties for this list view that is the overall size for the list and everything so yeah we will have the look for that too then after that guys we'll move to our next part on please scroll it a bit yeah so guys now i would suggest that uh, please open the dart pad so that uh, we can have a collaborative session though so it will be a lot interactive one because you might be facing some of the problems while trying so we can go with it and uh, if there are any questions related to yesterday's session also we can have it here because now we are going to more advanced level so uh, it might happen that a uh, few of the things you haven't understood so we will just clear it here then after that move towards the next part okay it can be related to anything 
uh, whether it's installation or anything else, you can ask it over here. Okay, guys. You want me to stop sharing, Himanshu? Uh, yeah, for now, please uh, stop sharing, Aman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Vipran, please, can you just be clear related to what you want? Uh, like, we want you to share the link. We got a question. Uh, what is scaffold? Okay. So, man, please, uh, would you explain him what exactly the scaffold is? Yeah, I part it. So, uh, as I explained you before, scaffold is like you can say a covering of a structure. So, inside that, all the widgets are there, right? So, and it ha it's like, a, you can say, a parent of the widget. It comes after material. And uh, you can have uh, different basic widgets inside it. So, the rows and columns, all those things, you can use that. So, it has a property called body, uh, which will take all your structures or all your widgets, which will be shown in the app screen. So, the app bar, which I was talking about, there's a property called app bar in scaffold which takes specifically the widget, which it shows on the top, on the top position. S similarly, it has the property called bottom bar, which it shows on the bottom position. So there are different properties inside them. And the main property, which is the body property inside that, uh, we add the widgets, which are being shown on the screen. So, you, so scaffold is like, you can say, uh, uh, outer structure which is needed uh, before uh, showing any app screen right so uh, this provides us with uh, this also provides us with different native libraries also so that is why that scaffold is required whenever we uh, uh, use any new app screen and if you have any specific question with scaffold like why does this have any issue with scaffold and why, if I am using scaffold, why this is happening? Like, if any specific question regarding that, I can answer that. Parthiv, is it clear now, or uh, you need some another example for that? So I have attached uh, one proper info so that you can get the scaffold means body. No, no, no. It does not mean body. So what actually it means is uh, it is used to implement the basic material design visual layout structure, which you can see. Okay, so the material design which we are using now, I'll be now more specific. Material design we are using, so there are two types, material app and Cupertino app. Material app is used for material design, Cupertino app is used for Cupertino design. So it implements the basic material design visual layout structure. So why we use scaffold is because it saves our time to write more code. So, so there are like more important things which it uh, like automatically take for example i will i will tell you one example if we are using an app bar so if by default if we give an app bar and we does not give it any color or any uh, height or anything so by default it will take that thing and it will show our default app bar and that default app bar with the default characteristics like color and all those things uh, it will have of android right 
similarly so scaffold is not body in body also whatever widgets we are using so inside scaffold whatever widgets we are using they will be a part of material library the android material library which we can say as similarly goes with cupertino so if you want to use cupertino uh, widgets but those widgets if uh, if by default you want to use and you don't want to give them any properties like height or weight or anything you want to save your time right if you don't want to customize anything you will just write it and you will just give it a title or anything and you don't want to customize its properties like colors and height and all those things so that is why you will use cupertino scaffold for ios and for android you will use normal scaffold so that is what scaffold is used for so it saves us coding time it's just like that without scaffold also you we can like uh, we can open some specific screens but if we are using material app we have to use a scaffold so that is because the primary reason for that material app is we want the uh, widgets to be uh, in like the feel and touch of the widgets should be like in like in android so that is why we are using scaffold here if you still have questions you can again ask also guys uh, you can just remember that whenever you want to use the draw widget that is uh, having the draw menu that is the side menu in your application okay so scaffold is having built in apis for all these things okay so guys uh, you can directly just use this scaffold and along with this you are also having the option for the uh, bottom sheets that is the uh, like we'll just give the example for this bottom sheet too in the uh, upcoming sessions but for now just remember that uh, what are the amana told you related to the scaffold okay because um, it makes your work a lot easier okay if you are using this scaffold so you don't have to manage every each and everything uh, by your own okay so yeah now we'll just move to the next section uh, amon please can you just uh you share your screen so we can just move toward the dark pile sure sure you are still unable to share the screen yeah actually uh, i don't know what's the problem with the screen share okay okay no issues okay can you see the screen uh not here will take some time i guess Manchu, can you check once? Uh, actually, it isn't visible in my side. Don't know what's the problem. Hi guys, just bear with us for two minutes.
Hi, Manju. I think the screen is visible now. Yeah, now it's visible. Okay, that's great. Aman, can you just please open this particular data pad I have shared with you? Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, you have shared it on the okay. Yeah. So guys, uh, we'll just start with the basic one, okay? That is the row, because we started earlier with the rows and columns. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna just please click on the hide. So we just skip those warnings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now we can run. First case, we will just run it. So I'll just do the explanation related to the widgets, okay? It takes some time, guys, sometimes, okay? Now, guys, you can clearly see there's a widget named as blue box, okay? So I'll be showing you what exactly this blue box widget is. But for now, just focus on this particular row, okay? So now our row widget holds the children, okay? That is the multiple uh, widgets, that is the blue box, okay? So guys, here you can clearly see that's being positioned in the horizontal one, okay? So now uh, you might be clear about what exactly row does okay so now if you just uh, scroll a bit to the blue box okay it's basically the custom widget which we built okay it's not the inbuilt widget so in order to build your own custom uh, widget you just have to define it as the class okay so yeah we'll just show you one piece can you just scroll it a bit Okay, so here's our widget. So basically guys, this blue box is nothing but a stateless widget because it's not going to hold any state. There's nothing like to uh, change in that particular widget. We are not having any text or anything else. But yeah, if you want to change its text in the real time, like if you want some button to be added over here, then change the particular text in that blue box widget. In that condition guys, you will uh, have to use it as a state full widget, okay? So after this, uh, we have just defined one of the container because we want to be uh, square. Then after that, we have defined the width and height, of course. Then along with this, we are using one of the property named as decoration. Now, guys, basically this decoration property uh, is very useful in order to decorate your widget. Like if you want to give particular color to that widget or the border or anything else. Okay. So in that condition, guys, this property plays a very important role. Okay. So along with this, we've uh, given it the box decoration, okay? There are different type of uh, widgets for this too, and we'll be introducing it to you. But for now, guys, remember that decoration property holds the uh, overall color and border, each and every property for the particular widget related to the look and feel, okay? So like here, we have defined the color as the blue color. Then after that, we've used border, okay? That is the... Uh, if you want to give the border on the particular side, for now we have been using it all. Okay, so guys, here the color is being imported from the inbuilt colors. Okay, so there are lots of color already there, so we don't need to define uh, our own. But yeah, you can define your own colors too. Okay, so now guys, uh, I guess you are clear with the row widget. Okay, and uh, as I have given you a short intro about the, the making your own widget. So yeah. It might be helpful for you to uh, build your own widgets, custom widgets, okay? And if you are not, then also it's okay because yeah, we are going to see that in our upcoming sessions too. So guys, uh, this is all about rows. Now guys, we'll just move to another section that is the column, okay? I want please just uh, switch to another one. Okay, uh, yeah, before that, I will just give you the example for the uh, main axis and cross axis one. Come on, please uh, run that because we'll just give the example for the main axis and cross axis. So now guys, here you can see that uh, we've used main axis dot 
Maxon Bean in this particular example. I'm gonna just scroll a bit uh, here because I want to show them the difference between both these things. Okay. So guys, if we just replace the max with the mean, okay. So you can clearly see the difference what exactly this main axis size does, okay. So uh, we'll just replace this max property with mean, okay, and run uh, our app again. So guys, now you might be like uh, more clear that exactly what actually is happening here, okay. So that's what the main axis size does. So yeah, we'll just move to the next one. So guys, uh, you just need to remember that uh, the like main axis size, uh, we just use it for the amount of free space along the main axis, which is being shown to you, okay? So it's been uh, introduced in Flutter. So you can use it for that particular purpose, okay? So all the space between the columns, items, and everything, okay? That's uh, what you can use with the main axis property. So now we will just move to the next one. That is the main axis alignment. Now, uh, before this, we have seen a great example where we were able to play with all those widgets. Uh, where we were able to set the particular properties like main axis alignment, cross axis alignment, and whatever it does, okay. So if you just look to this particular example, here you can clearly see that main axis alignment dot start, it's going to move the overall content to the start of that particular widget, okay. And if you just replace it with the end, okay, so it's going to take at the uh, ending of that particular widget. So we'll just replace it with the end and run it again. So now clearly you can see guys, the content which were uh, which was at the starting of that particular widget has been moved to the ending, okay. So after this, guys, uh, these are the basic properties which you are going to definitely use because that's uh, going to help you build the UI in a very better way. So yeah, that was all about main axis alignment. Okay, so I hope you guys understand the concept of the main axis alignment rows. So yeah, is there anything related to this you haven't understood? So we'll just cover it up. Okay, so everything is clear guys. Can we move to the next part here? Yeah, it looks like they are clear. Okay, so, okay, let's move to the another. So Aman, please can you just continue with the cross axis alignment here? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so as Manshu uh, told you up to here, the main axis alignment property, I'll be continuing with the cross axis alignment property. So what that property does is it determines how the row and column can position their children on their cross axis. As I told you, the cross axis ones <clears throat> is vertical, right? A row's cross axis is vertical and a column's cross axis is horizontal. So it will be vice versa. When you will be using a row, its cross axis will be vertical. That is from top to bottom. And when you will use column, its cross axis will be horizontal. It is from left to right. So uh, the cross axis alignment property can have five possible values. These are being shown in your screens. First is the start which what happens is positions children near the start of the cross axis top for row left for column dot end dot center positions children at the middle of the cross axis middle for row center for column baseline so what that baseline thing does is it aligns children by their character baselines so what is a baseline actually so when we see here, we get it requires that the text baseline property is set to alphabetic. 
so what it does it uh, it aligns their ch uh, children by their character base lines that means the text pe jo hamara hai us hisab se wo alignment ko uh, सॉरी उस हिसाब से वो अलाइनमेंट को हमें अलाइन करता है सो वील बी सींग दैम मॉडिफाइंग क्रॉस ऑक्सिस लाइन सो ही हेज वन डार्ट पैड सो यहाँ पे यू कैन सी दिस इज आर रो एंड दीज आर द अलाइनमेंट विच वी आर यूजिंग सो फर्स्ट वील रन एंड सी वॉट हैपन्स हियर सो दीज आर द थ्री विजिट्स now space around what this space around is doing when we go up here here so it's similar to evenly but reduces half of the space before the first child and after the last child to half of the width between the children so what it is doing is it's reducing the space okay from here Similar to that, but reducing the space. So the widgets are positioned at the middle of the cross axis. Okay, why? Because we are using cross axis alignment here as center. Okay. So what happens if we change it to start? Okay. So it will the cross axis alignment will work vertically here in row. and what happens we click on dot we'll get the options whatever things we can do right if we change it to stretch what will happen see because these blue box and bigger blue box widgets are stretched across the cross axis okay so that's why it will show it like this because we're stretching those widgets right similarly and you know start you know what that baseline does is it will not have any effect here because uh, we do not have any text to start with now when we come to main axis alignment here also there are changes which we can do for example uh, we can take space between so this will take it like this okay it will start it will not take any space from left or right it will just take space from here and here this is between and this is space around so oh, similarly you can experiment like uh, like different methods which you can use here and uh, previously for media query which i was talking the context this is the context which i was talking about so whether you are navigating whether you are using media query whether you are using uh, so there are many things which you can use so here this context context is required okay so okay let's okay this alignment thing is completed here yeah, we have the flexible widget okay so i will hand over to himanshu he'll cover the expanded okay so guys uh, i hope you understand the basic concepts of the main axis and cross axis alignment so can we just move to the expanded widget please let me know in the comment section because it will help us a lot to know that yes you are really understanding all these concepts please be open like if you don't understand a thing just say you don't please be clear guys okay okay so we'll just uh, get started with the expanded widget okay so guys 
uh, the name itself suggests that uh, it's going to like expand to whatever the space is being uh, available. Okay, so basically that's what the expanded widget is for. Okay, so uh, whatever it is, maybe a row column or anything else you might be using. Okay, so it's going to fill the available space. Okay, along the main axis. Okay, for the row and vertically for the column. Okay, so like if the multiple uh, consider that you are having the multiple children okay so the divide among them uh, is being divided according to the flex factor okay so we are going to definitely see what the flex factor is but for now just remember that expanded widget is going to like uh, fill the complete available space what is space is being uh, left on so yeah that's what the expanded widget does so we we'll just uh, look at the dart pad here so now guys, okay, just a second. Uh, I'm gonna please make it inside the expanded widget. So there'll be more, more clear that exactly what it is. Um, we can just wrap it. Yeah, that's good. So row is good or should I remove it? Uh, yeah, it's good. In the next one, we'll just remove the row. So they'll, uh, that might be more clear that exactly what does the X1 widget do. Okay. So now guys, you can clearly see that whenever we are going to use the expanded widget, so it's going to use the overall available space. So here guys, we are using the row, okay? So definitely it's going to cover the horizontal space. Whatever the available space there is in the row, it's going to cover the whole space, okay? So if we just replace this particular row with the uh, column, okay? So in that case, it's going to take the vertical one. in the next one please wrap it in the uh, container okay yeah so here is normal expanded yeah it's not having anything like a uh, row or column so it's not going to expand because it doesn't even know what exactly it wants to do so we'll just wrap it in the container Is this okay? Uh, wait a second, Amun, please can you just uh, revert the code to the row first? Sure. Done. Okay. So now, yeah, you can run it. Now guys, uh, this was the normal row, okay? So basically now it's not going to fill any of the space in between, okay? But uh, if you guys remember that, if we use the expanded widget, okay? So it's going to completely fill the available space, okay? So you just need to remember that whenever you're going to use the expanded widget. So it might be a row or column, okay? So in that case, guys, always remember if you're going to use the row, then it's going to completely fill the space in the horizontal one and if it's the column then it's going to hold the horizontal space that's it guys that's what uh, the expanded widget do now guys we'll just move to the next one that is the size work widget okay so 
so now guys you might be wondering that what is this sized box okay so earlier we have seen one of the example that was the uh, our widget was there that was named as the blue box okay so there we have defined the properties like width and height and everything okay so basically guys uh, if you just look at this particular example that is the sized box okay so it's going to hold the uh, similar kind of properties that's the width and everything so it's basically a single child widget okay so it's going to hold the width property now you can clearly see that guys uh, if you just look at the blue box widget okay i'm going to just scroll to blue box widget yeah okay so here guys you can see that we've already defined that the particular width and height for that blue box is 50 50 okay that's the square but if you just uh, look at the uh, example okay just scroll it a bit upward so here guys you can clearly see we use the blue box along with the size box okay so in size box if we define the width as 100 okay so it's going to like wrap the particular widget and uh, make its width to 100 okay in the similar way if we just wrap other two blue boxes to the size box okay so yeah we will just wrap one of these blue box in the size box so it will be more clear for you guys to understand this concept so we will just wrap this blue box uh in the size box and give it a different width So basically, guys, if you want to remember this concept of size box, just remember that it's going to force whatever the content is being wrapped inside it. Okay, so whatever the width you are given for the particular widget, like it's fifty fifty. Still, then, if you just uh, put it inside the size box, then it's going to force it to give the width whatever the width you are going to define with the size box property. So, guys, you can clearly see that. even though we have given the uh, widget that is the blue box widget the uh, properties like width and height as 50 50 when we wrap it inside the sized box okay so at that time it's going to uh, like uh, consider that it's going to just put this particular property that's the width and height used in the sized box and not with the original one okay so you can use the size box whenever uh, you want like your widget should have the custom properties at that time you can directly use the size box because sometimes it may happen that you will build a widget then again if you want that uh, that particular widget should have a different custom size okay so every time it's not possible that you go there and change that particular widget because it might be having some other sizes or uh, in overall <laughs> you might be using it with the same size and in one place you want that it's width and height should be different okay so in that case guys remember you can use the size box where you can just uh, define custom width and height so it will just uh, go with that properties okay uh, so yeah one more thing uh, i'm going to just scroll a bit upward yeah here guys you can see that uh, there's one more thing that is the size box and there's only width being given to it okay that is the 50 now guys it's going to like uh, create a space okay in between the widget because uh, the name itself says that it's going to draw a box okay uh, so yeah it's uh, it can be used in order to give the spacing in between this particular uh, widgets which ever we are going to use okay so basically guys uh, size box can be used to give the space in between or with the width and height property too okay but yeah uh, you just have to remember that uh, basically we use the spacer okay so yeah we we'll just move to the next one that is the spacer come on please continue with the spacer yes so is one tip which is starting like what's the difference between size box and spacer so what the spacer widget does it it also can create space between widgets right and it is similar to size box so the question comes is like what's the difference between it so when to use spacer and when to use size box you use spacer when you want to create space using a flex property 
and you use size box when you want to create space using a specific number of logical pixels now i'll explain what it is trying to convey here so <coughs> i will go and click on this run button here so it's asking what do you think would happen if we added another spacer widget with a flex value of 1 between the second <coughs> and third blue box widget so here what we have done is there's a flex property of spacer now what is flex okay let me open it so there's a widget called flexible which is being used when we want it to take the whole of the space for that for that we use the flex property what will happen if i change this value to 2 is there any difference did you notice any difference not much of a difference so when we go and find about what spacer actually does sorry uh, i mean the flex actually does the flex property so what we can do here is we can control the axis here how let me get back to my dart pad here yeah okay so uh, in uh, when we use a flexible widget uh, which is uh, generally being uh, wrapped up with row or column or a parent widget so what they do is they control the axis of children of children widgets so that is why uh, that is what the difference is uh, between the size box and spacer so in spacer what is the catch is we can't give it the logical pixel values okay this we can't specify number uh, like give it the height 50 or width 50 like size like size box here we give a flex value what flex value does it it controls the axis there right so what axis along what axis along which the children are placed by children i mean the widget the multiple widgets which you are using there so to cause a child to expand to fill the available space okay so for that what we use we use this flex property so it's like um, the expanded widget also do the same kind of thing so this is what sp spacer is used for so uh, it's not uh, much used uh, so most of the times uh, for spacing we use uh, size size box only okay so if you guys have any issues with spacer please let me know in the comments and now is the basic widget which is a text widget so this is as simple as that so i don't think it's um, like there's anything more to explain here so here this is our widget and it has a property of style uh, using which we can give it its font size font family color whatever things we want to give it and it has more of the property which you can use one of the property is can say font weight so this hey got the font weight of bold 
so there are more properties which you can use so this is as simple as it gets with the text widget then we have the icon widget which uh, himanshu already told you about and then again we have the image widget which himanshu will be talking about later so in the spacer widget i would uh, again like want to go here so <clears throat> here uh, you won't be able to understand properly what it is doing so actually when you will be using it uh, specifically when you will be using the flex widget and uh, <clears throat> you want for uh, want it for specific uh, application then you will understand like what is actually the difference between it between them and when do we use it so when we come back again uh, it is saying use size box when you want to create space using a specific number of logical pixels and we use flex when we want to uh, change things according to axis can again experiment here and see what happens Okay. Now we are good. I will just uh, put that spacer after the second one. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So both spacer widgets will create equal amount of space between all three blue box widgets. So if we want to change the property along the axis, we use spacer. Otherwise, if we want a specific value to be specified, we use size box. So if still someone has an issue or confusion regarding that, please let me know. So looks like uh, we are done. Himanshu, anything left to cover? No, almost we've covered everything, Aman. So we'll just uh, wrap up. If anyone is having any question, uh, we can just cover it up. Um, let us know, guys, if you're having any of the problem because uh, from tomorrow onwards, we are going to like deal with the uh, real world application. So in that case, guys, it's. Uh, much needed that you know all these things because these are the basic building blocks for your complete UI of the application. Okay, so I would really suggest you that please uh, do comment if you don't remember anything or if there is any problem related to the installation or whatever problem you are facing. Okay, because uh, if you don't open up now, it's going to create a problem. Uh, so yeah, I would better suggest you to just uh, let us know that whatever the problem you are facing. Yeah, yes, because uh, we have seen throughout the sessions, like uh, there might be different ways for different people to understand, right? So there might be a different way to uh, explain the same things, right? So if uh, someone did not understand any concept or anything, so they can still ask. I guess everything is clear, guys, because uh, there are no comments related to this. So, should we consider, guys, that uh, you really understood whatever uh, we taught you today? Because we are going to have the questionnaire for the same. So, in that quiz, also, you have to like give your responses. Okay, so great, guys. So let's uh, wrap up our session. Uh, Aman, is there anything you'd like to tell them about? Yes, uh, for people uh, who are planning to uh, go full time with Flutter. So uh, <clears throat> I will tell you it's lot like uh, it will be a lot convenient and comfortable than native. That is for sure. But uh, 
you will have to face native uh, at a certain point of time because you will be building for android and uh, ios at the end exactly. so thing is yeah you are using a platform you are using a technology but uh, whatever uh, the permissions and whatever the things are there you are actually using native apis and services to achieve that task so you need to be uh, uh, proper and uh, somewhat basics uh, get your basic strongs in a uh, native also for that and also you need to know one thing is um, if you don't maintain a proper structure uh, uh, while doing projects in flutter you can really get messed up so that thing you need to uh, be make sure of that's why this session is so much important the widget session so you need to know and you need to understand how to and when to use and which widget to use when when it is required when it is not required because here what will happen when you are building ui you will not get errors and you won't either get warnings so you need to make sure like uh, where which thing is required to use them so there are so many things uh, <clears throat> which you can do yeah that's what i want to say and uh, exception handling uh, get better at that and uh, always uh, make sure that whatever exceptions are as you are coming with always read the logs so by logs i mean like the your console so whenever you run your app um, so you get the logs like what is happening in the background so you need to observe them carefully you need to know even if the no error is coming even if no exception is coming you need to look into it and you need to know what is happening there so that when rainy season comes uh, by rainy season i means when the exception comes you know why it is happening right so uh, so those things also you need to uh, uh, keep a keen eye on so i've got one request sir can you share the link of these widgets so that we practice it a little bit sure sure we will do we'll share it um, shimanshu please share them the link uh, so that yeah. You just uh, receive all those things in the description, guys. Once the session will be ended, and also, guys, one more thing that uh, we would suggest you that uh, please do use the null safety feature of the uh, diet, okay? Because yeah, it's yeah. a really good practice. Because uh, there might be like whenever you are dealing with the APIs and everything, that time you might face a lot of problem for the null pointer exception, okay? So it's really a great feature by that by providing the null safety, okay? And also, uh, what Amanas told you earlier that related to the native things like permissions and everything. Okay, in yesterday's session, we saw that uh, whatever the files are, we are going. Okay, I think uh, there has has been an issue with Amanshu. So, uh, I'll again ask if there are any questions or there are any doubts uh, which you want to ask. I'm still here. Otherwise, we'll wrap this up. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Uh, hope you all uh, <clears throat> understood uh, uh, what we have told you about widgets and how they work. Um, yeah, so this was all we have lined up for you guys today. I would like to thank our tech ex experts and speakers for the day. That is Iman Shukale and Aman Khan Rohani, sir, for such an enlightening session. We are all waiting for your responses on the feedback form and the quiz below given. Please make sure you all fill the form because only that will assure your certificates. So keep growing, keep learning, uh, signing off. See you all tomorrow for the third day of Let's Utter in Flutter.